Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are all well. If you guys are interested in videos around social work, business and career, then you are in the right place. Make sure you subscribe. And what are we gonna talk about in today's video? Okay, so in this video, I am going to do another continuation of my macro social work series. I love this series so much because I feel very passionate about the field of macro social work. I think it is one of those areas of social work that often get overlooked and not because it's not a phenomenal branch of social work, but because people really just don't know much about it and they don't know what career options are out there for them within the branch of macro social work. So in this video, I'm going to talk about another career option that macro social workers have. So if you're interested, then keep on watching this video. Okay, so today we are going to talk about and highlight the field of social research. So we've all taken science classes in elementary school and probably learned the basics of what research means. The research is basically the study of a certain subject. You kind of start off with a theory or a belief around a certain question and you go about doing research to test whether or not your theory is true. So social research is basically the idea of researching problems that impact society. Social research is basically the study of people and society. And the reason you do social research is ultimately to find solution to some of society's toughest problems. If you are someone who likes data, if you ask a lot of questions and you're genuinely interested in society and people, I think doing social research would be a great career for you that will provide you with a lot of enjoyment. So one thing about being a social researcher is yes, you're working with people, but you're working with people in a very different way. So one of the main duties of a social researcher is conducting research, whether it be qualitative or quantitative. Some of the qualitative research is collected by doing focus groups or observing a specific population that you're interested in. Most of the quantitative research that's done by social researchers is conducted via surveys. In both of these ways, you're still going to be working with the population, but in a very different type of way. Yes, you're going to be learning about challenges and struggles that a certain population has, but you won't actually be the one that's providing resources or referrals or therapy for the clients, helping them to get through those issues. That may be something that everyone isn't comfortable with. You are going to be providing solutions for societal issues, but it's not gonna be something that's done right away. You have to actually go through the whole research process before you can actually see what the data and the results are from the research and provide the findings to the general public so other people can you know, use those findings to create programs, new legislation, and changes that can help the population that you were working with. It definitely leads to societal change, but it's not something that happens overnight. So as I mentioned, when you are a social researcher, you are starting your work with a question. Some of the questions that social researchers may have is, you know, why is a certain subset of the population suffering with obesity and diabetes more than another part of the population? Or why are teens more likely to take part in social justice movements compared to adults? I mean, I don't really know if that stat is actually accurate. I'm just giving an example of what question a social researcher may have at the beginning of their project. So that researcher would then take that question, do some type of study to see what that answer is or if their theory of that answer is indeed true. The researcher has to be, you know, very unbiased. It's important for them to frame the study and, you know, the questions that they're asking in the survey, etc., to be unbiased and to not lead the participants in answering in a certain way that most aligns to what their theory is. 
when it comes to social research, there's a lot of ethics that goes behind it. And the ethics of research is something that you would have to get very familiar with if you're interested in this field. I'll talk more about different skills that you need to learn about this field a little bit later. But if you are interested in being a social researcher and you're also interested in social work, I would say the best path for you would be to get your MSW. There are opportunities to be a researcher with only your bachelor's degree, but you're really going to learn more about research and also have more job opportunities available for you if you do have at least your master's degree. Um, a lot of social workers do ultimately get their PhD so they can do research, but you don't necessarily have to have a PhD to have the title of a social researcher. So at least to get your master's degree, I would say I would recommend that you enter into a macro social work track. But if you do know a specific population that you want to work with, or if you want to specifically focus on doing research around mental illnesses, then you may want to focus on a more clinical track track or a track in your MSW program that focuses on the population that you want to work with. But I do think focusing on a macro track prepares you well for social research. I would also recommend you to take advantage of as many research and program evaluation courses as possible because you will have the chance to choose different electives um, when you are in your MSW program. So definitely try to fill those electives with those research oriented courses is and when you have the chance to choose a field placement, once again, I would choose field placements that will give you that research experience. And also, if you're someone who's really serious about doing social research, talk to your professors, see what type of research they're doing, and try to become a part of that research. You can do this through taking an independent study class, or you can just help out with um, your professor's research as an extracurricular activity, which is one thing that I did when I was in my grad school program. I think, you know, taking advantage of these extra classes, doing field placements oriented in research, doing research with your professors will give you a lot of skills that you can ultimately use to advance your career in social research. And it can also help you to understand if this is indeed the direction that you want to go in in your social work career. So I did a little research online and I found that the average salary of a social researcher is about $62,000 a year. However, the range was pretty large. The average range for a social researcher is about $40,000 to $175,000 a year. So you definitely do have the opportunity to make a higher salary than traditional social workers. However, I'm thinking that the higher your educational attainment is, the more likely you are gonna be at getting those higher salary roles. This is another reason that I advocate for macro social work and I love the field of macro social work, it's because you're able to make a difference in your career while also taking care of yourself financially and ensuring that you're giving yourself the chance to get access to some of those higher level social impact roles. So where do social researchers work? That may be one of your questions, you know, like what environments do they tend to work in? Do they work in nonprofits? Do they work in government agencies, etc.? Most of the social researchers that you'll find if you do research either work in some type of government agency, a university, or for a consultancy think tank. And just so you're clear, a think tank is basically an organization dedicated towards coming up with solutions to big problems. Oftentimes they're doing research as a consultant agency to where other organizations hire them to bring their team in and help them to figure out how to solve a problem within their organization. Think tanks also tend to you know, write books or publish their research in the form of different media outlets or publications to share the learnings and findings from their research. Of course, social researchers would work in universities as well because a big 
aspect of universities is that research component. And a lot of government organizations hire social researchers. Those researchers also work alongside people who do more policy oriented work. If you work in policy and you're trying to develop new policies or change existing policies, you're going to have to do research to figure out the best way to do that. And that's where the social researcher would come in. So there's definitely a variety of different places that social researchers would work. But you know, usually I find that they work in the government for different consultancy firms or think tanks or for a university. So if you want to be successful in the field of social research, these are a few skills that you have to have. Communication skills are going to be really important because not only are you communicating with the participants or the people in the study that you're conducting, but you also have to ultimately communicate your findings with the general public or if you're working for a consultancy firm to the clients that are paying you to do this research. It's also important for you to know how to analyze data. So after you actually do the qualitative or quantitative research and now you just have all of these numbers you're going to have to have the skill to actually figure out what these numbers mean to create graphs and charts to represent the numbers and to tell a story of what your research has found and some popular data analysis software programs that you need to know how to use is a program called R or R studio and SPSS however I've been finding that the SPSS program is not as widely used as it used to be when I was in grad school <laughs> man I feel so old saying that but yeah when I was in grad school everyone was using SPSS and that was about six years ago but now I'm finding that R Studio is the program that most organizations are using to analyze research data so definitely look into those programs and the sooner you can get familiar with the R Studio program the better however it is important to note that every organization may use a different data analysis software program but there are are typically going to be some general similarities between the programs so if you can get familiar with R Studio or SPSS I think a lot of those skills will be transferable to a different software program and of course you're going to have to have the skill of research you have to know how to conduct a study but you also have to know how to research and synthesize data that's been collected by other researchers as well so knowing how to analyze text and reading through research studies and publications to figure out what it all means having strong reading and writing skills is going to be important and also just research analysis skills in general. Oftentimes people think doing research is all about putting on studies but in all actuality the bulk of your job as a researcher is reading constantly, figuring out what other researchers who focus on the area that you focus on have found and comparing and contrasting these hundreds and hundreds of studies that you're reading to one another and figuring out what a common theme is. So yeah, if you have this picture in your mind that a researcher is someone who's in a lab with a cool lab coat and you know doing all of these fun scientific studies, that's only a part of it. Another part of it is just sitting at a desk for hours and hours on in reading other people's work. So if you don't like reading, being a social researcher may not really be a good career path for you. But remember, um, ideally you're reading about things that you're really passionate about. So it's different than if you know you were forced to read something that you don't really care about. It's not like grad school where you have to read about a diverse array of topics some that you care about and some that you may not really care much about. So hopefully that makes it easier. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't, but you know, that's what it is. Also, as I mentioned before, you do have to know the rules of conducting a research project that's ethical. So you'll have to learn the skills of being an ethical researcher. Just like, you know, the importance of confidentiality when it comes to doing direct practice social work, it's the same when you're doing macro social work and particularly social research. All right, so hopefully this video helped you with knowing another opportunity that you have as a macro social worker. So with this series, 
I really want to inspire you guys to look at macro social work as an option for yourselves. Macro social work is a great branch of social work and hopefully I can help you to learn more about it. And if I have any social researchers who's watching this video, please drop a comment and let us know of your experiences. And on that note, I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.